Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tuts, and today we're going to be talking about some new form input types in HTML5. And there's lots of them, so this is going to be broken up into a couple of videos. So these form input types, the uh, compatibility is a little scattered, so I would recommend checking out the compatibility individually for these input types uh, because over the course of time for when this video is created to when you're watching it who knows if the compatibility that I'm saying is going to be accurate so please do research on which items that are going to be compatible with browsers that you need to make them compatible with although the fallbacks are pretty are pretty nice so they look like just normal input fields so it's you know it's it's a little bit of a difference but if you want to use one of these by all means, check out the compatibility before so you know what you're getting into. So we're just gonna have a basic form at the bottom of this, and this is just going to be inside of, we'll just have a uh, section here, and I'm gonna make a form tag, and I don't, I don't I'm gonna have a action or anything right now because I just wanna show off these input types. So the first one we're gonna talk about is number. So if we say input, uh, in type, we can have a number tag. And this is a little bit different than anything we've seen before because there hasn't been an input type number before. So let's check out what happens in our browser. You'll notice that we have this uh, number box here and there's an up and down on it. Also, if I hit up and down on my keyboard, it allows me to increase or decrease numbers. You can also likewise click these up and down or you could just in fact type a number. So what happens if you try to type letters in here? Well, you can, but then your browser gives you a little message that says, please enter a number. And this little message is going to be specific to browser. This is what the uh, message looks like in Google's Chrome. So what kind of things can we do with this number input? Well, there's actually some attributes we can give it. We can give it the value, step, minimum, and maximum attributes. So if we say something like, um, let's go right here, and let's say minimum 10, uh, the minimum value is going to be 10. So if I type in, or if I just hit up, you'll notice it starts at 10. If I try to go any less than 10, it's not going to let me do it. More importantly, if I try to have 9, it tells me I need a value greater or equal to 10. So these are great. These are things that we've never been able to do without JavaScript. So now we can say it has a max also, and it has a max of 20. Now we can't go over 20. And it can have a step as well. So every single time you go up, you're going to go up by 2. And its starting value is just going to be its value. And this value will just have it start at 10. So now let's refresh. Now our field is starting at 10. Every single time we go up, it goes up 2, up all the way up to 20, and then no higher than that. If we try to have an odd number, it says it's an invalid number. That's because our step is only allowing us to do intervals of 2 here. So this is the number input style. So before we do another one, I'm actually going to fix this CSS here. And just in our main area, I'm just going to add it so we have a width um, and that it's in the center. Otherwise, these things might get a little hard to see. So in the main, I'm just going to have this say width of, let's say, 80% and uh, margin can just be zero and auto. And let's increase the input font size. Let's have this just be 20 for now, just so we can see these nice and big. Great, so this is a little bit better. Here's our number input, great. All right, let's come back to our code and I'm gonna add another input. And this is just gonna be an input type of range. So what does range do? Well, range, you might think is sort of like a number range or something. Well, no, actually, let's save this and you'll see that range is actually a slider. We have the slider and this is going to have the value of a number just like this number list. However, it's going to be like a little slider here. And how that slider is rendered is determined by your browser itself. Now, for uh, this range, we can also have a initial value for it. We can have a step and a min and a max. So we could also have min 
equals uh, zero, max equals 100. And you could also have a step, but uh, it's no, no big deal. So I'm gonna have it a value at um, currently 50. And you'll see when we refresh this, the slide error is going to start dead in the middle here. Now on browsers that this is not supported in, uh, like older, uh, just older browsers in general, Internet Explorer, Firefox, uh, you're just going to see an ordinary input. So that would accept a text or a, a number value or something. So your users would be able to enter a, a number itself. Okay, so we have range and we have number. We also have an input type of date. Let's save this and see what happens. Now we have this date picker. You can use this up and down. You can use this click that opens up a browser's uh, calendar widget here, which is really nice because uh, we don't have to do this with JavaScript or anything like that. And it just is, is really elegant solution. Of course, if you want this to be compatible with most browsers, you're probably gonna have to write a JavaScript fallback for those browsers that aren't compatible because otherwise this is just going to show up like an ordinary input field. So if you're just seeing ordinary input fields for these, try to use a browser like Chrome and you're gonna see these sort of results here. So what sort of attributes does this accept? This accepts a value um, in which the format is similar to, well, it's the exact same as that we accepted in our date time time element. So if we say value, we wanna have it be today, it'd be 2013 hyphen 06-22, save this, refresh. We now see that is the uh, uh, default text default text value here. We can also have the uh, certain step, maybe a step in days, so it's going up by, every time you click the up button, it's gonna go up by two days. And you could also have it a minute and a max. This way you don't want people maybe picking things in the past or later than uh, 2013 or something like that, you could say min is equal to uh, 2013 0101. So this is going to be the minimum it allows you to choose is January 1st, 2013. And um, let's go back here. And you'll notice the widget doesn't even allow me to go further than January 1st. And it won't let me select 31st of the previous year. However, it will let me select January 1st. Great, so, so far these are three incredibly useful input types. And they really just keep getting more and more useful. Uh, there's all sorts of really great ones. So let's do one more, and we're going to do color. So input type, and it's color. Now, I don't believe color is supported very widely, so you're gonna wanna check out uh, what browsers are supporting color at the time that you're watching this video. However, I know Google Chrome supports it, and it's going to be a color picking widget, which opens up your system's color picking menu. On OS X, this is what it looks like, and you'll notice it's going to be selecting a color for me. And great, I just click the X box here. And now it's this green color has the value that the color chooser has picked. And when it submits, it's going to be the hex value of the color. So of course, browser support, and the fallback is just going to be a blank text field where you can put that hex value. But this is going to spit out a hex value, which is pretty darn cool. So in the next video, we're gonna go over some of the other input types that are still to come. We have uh, like an autocomplete box. We have an email, URL, telephone, search box. So there's a lot of great elements and we're gonna keep going over these input types in the next video. So as always, if you have any questions or comments, leave a comment in the video. Hit us up at Level Up Tuts on Twitter or um, at Level Up Tuts on Facebook or just wherever. Once again, this is Scott Talinsky and thanks for watching.